It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Forum on Eagle Community Television. Again, we record this at our Dillon's location on Vine Street, and if you want to stop by, we record this at 2 o'clock on Monday afternoons. Our guest today is Becky Peterson, and Becky is head of residential life at Fort Hayes State University. She also has a passion for outdoors, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in our program as well. First off, welcome to our program, Becky. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know what? Uh, when you mention residential life, there's a lot of things that kind of tie in when you talk about Fort Hayes State University. But what all does that entail when you say residential life? Um, for us, it encompasses the housing and dining components of students living on campus. Um, it includes the facilities, the beds that they sleep in, the building that they're in, but then also the programmatic elements. Um, we have several student organizations in the Hall Councils, but also the Residence Hall Association um, who plan events for students. We have resident assistants who live on the floors um, who plan events and activities for students to get to know one another and build community um, in the halls. How did you get this job? This doesn't sound like one of those jobs you just <coughs> think about because I'm thinking about 1,600 <coughs> meals a day. Yep. No, well, three times. Yeah, three times. So, um, how'd you get started in residential start? life? So I got started as a student. I was involved with the residence hall association. I did my undergraduate at Marquette University in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Um, and then from there, I was a resident assistant, loved what I did. Um, my hall director at the time, my supervisor said, you can do this for a living. Um, and I, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, I actually get paid for what I do. And I was like, Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, from that point, I graduated and pursued a master's from Oklahoma State University um, in college student development, where I was a hall director. Um, and then I became a professional hall director and did that for a couple years um, before coming down to Hayes, Kansas to be the assistant director of residential life. And then in October, um, I applied and got promoted into the director position. Well, it's interesting when you look at what happened <coughs> on campus, and you mentioned 1,600 students that are living there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of responsibility. It is. What happens on a day like, you know, when it snows and you have all of a sudden that sort of thing? Do you have that all obviously prepared and there's a system for all those types of things? There is um, a system in place and we have policies and procedures for emergency management, which makes it really helpful. Um, but on the day-to-day, -day, when there's a snow day, the hall directors really step up and their staff step up to have activities, to have something productive for students to do, to make sure that they're safe. Um, knock on wood, we won't have two snow days in a row this year, but... Um, really just gives them an opportunity to be social and to have some good fun. You mentioned safety. How do you deal with that? Because there's so when you talk about safety, it, it, there's all types of things, whether right. it be internal or external, you know, safety measures, fire, all those things. How do you deal with that? So we deal with that in a couple of different ways. We have resident assistants to our undergraduate students who live on the floors with the students. We train them every fall and every spring to be prepared for safety um, and understand what's happen when there's a crisis. We spend a lot of time with them on this. And then every night there are resident assistants who are on call and they walk rounds in all of the buildings, really just talking with students, seeing what's going on. Um, but if there's a major crisis, they're able to address it. And then we also have our hall directors who serve on an on-call basis as well. So if an RA can't necessarily handle something or it's out of their scope, um, they're the ones who step in and really make sure that it happens. And then we work really closely with our university police department to have a really good partnership and um, communicate back and forth and really rely on one another. One of the things I see, and you know, not that not that every campus doesn't have that, but, but dealing with some of the alcohol and drug problems mm -hmm. that are related and, and not so much that it's worse at Fort Hayes, better at Fort Hayes, it's just that it comes along with that population. How do you deal with that? I think that one, we try and be proactive with that, um, provide students with alternatives to alcohol. For example, we have um, late night programming after dark that the Union and the Center for Student Involvement puts on. Um, on Friday nights as a way to provide students an alternative to going out. We have programs in the halls as alternatives as well on those evenings. Um, but really we have educational conversations with students about here are the opportunities and here are the choices you can make and here's how it affects your education. Um, I think students, they sometimes don't always think long range and really helping them think like if you are going out every Thursday, Friday night, how does this affect going to class on Friday morning? How does this affect your relationship with your roommate and really get them to think critically about their choices? Well, you mentioned some programs that go along with, with being a on-campus student. Mm -hmm. 
you take care of those as well or do you bring in outside uh, individuals to help with, with the, some of the other training, some of the other, I say, recreation but educational type of thing? So the programs for the students, the RAs, um, typically put those on and then we have other student organizations that come in and put them on. Um, one of them is our residence hall association. They're essentially the governing body um, of every student who lives in the halls. They're a student representative group. And so they um, have done events this past year. They did a stress relief event where they did splatter painting and brought in a massage person two weeks ago to help students just de-stress right before the finals come on. They do an extravaganza every year out on the Custer lawn. So they bring in artists and um, they did inflatables. They had an exotic petting zoo two years ago. So they do some fun alternatives for our students. How do you deal with parents? Because, you, you, you know, parents, I, you know, you look and when school starts and you'll have, you know, not freshman students on a rope, but they're all kind of walking around doing the tours of campus. Parents play a role in this because, mm -hmm. you know, they want to be able to interface, yet the kids, on the other hand, the students are not necessarily wanting parents around. Right. What do you do so in that case? So we view parents as partners. Um, we understand that students come to college and have a sense of freedom and, and a lot of excitement tied to that, which is good, but helping them understand that there are consequences to the choices they make. Um, and so parents, for us, when they're calling with concerns, we really try and get the student involved and say, the parent calls with a roommate issue, we ask the parent to tell the student to come and talk to us and try and solve that for the student and not necessarily um, rely on everyone's insight and input, but try and get the student invested and teach them how to be an active participant in their education. But parents, we work with them, they're partners in education. I think if I, I'm not a parent, but if I'm ever blessed, that would be a terrifying thing to leave my student in mm -hmm. the hands of someone else, to so really have some compassion and grace there. So. My guess is you give uh, parents some confidence because you've been through the process you, you appear to understand it well. Was the job what you expected when we talked about this? Oh. And you know, you, you know, you don't probably think about going to school to become no. what you're doing. But so, is it what you expected? Um, so I have been very blessed. The job has been what I have expected. Um, I was able to learn from my predecessor in terms of his experience, which has been really helpful. Um, I think it's been a a great opportunity. I think our students and staff are fantastic. There's a lot of change and growth within the department right now. Um, we're doing some amazing things. We just redid a room in Weast Hall to make it a fully multimedia room, and that was completely based upon student input by the staff getting excited about it. So I think we have a lot of really great opportunities. I am going to ask one other question. Then we're going to talk about your your passion. You, you have passion for this, I can tell as well, but you have another passion. We'll come back after the break and talk about that. But one last question on residential life. Mm -hmm. How often does your phone ring? Is it like 24-7? Oh. I can see at any point in time there would be something going on that you probably would want to know about. At any point in time, you can receive a call, which is fine. Um, but we have staff so trained and they're so competent and I trust them a lot that I know that they can handle most things that come their way. But if, um, if they need extra support or help, I'm here. Just like my supervisor, Dr. Nichols, is there for me. So. Well, residential life at Forte's, obviously, it's been growing. I know there's always pressure on classroom, or, you know, at one point in time, a year ago, there were people living in a hotel because there just wasn't room on campus. But you, know, you do an amazing job to take care of all those 1,600 yeah. students in those rooms. We're building um, a brand new residence mm -hmm. hall that will open up in the fall of 2016, so there's a lot of change and growth. Um, I'm really excited. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, you have another passion, and this is what is is really fun part of this program, is that you get a chance to meet people and some of the things outside of their job that they do, but you have a real love for outdoors. I do. And we're going to take a break and find out how uh, Becky is working on that to create a whole other program for women and the outdoors. Our program is brought to you by Hayes Med. We'll be back after this. Youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines. Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com.
It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, and tons of high-definition TV channels, all with a level of customer service and value you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back to the second half of our forum program here on Eagle Community Television. I'd love to hear from you. Send me a note, gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. I'd like your suggestions on future programs, some ideas you might have as somebody that would be interesting, like Becky is, to be on our program. You can also go on Facebook. You'll find us under ECTV Forum. Click us on and say like as your Facebook friend. We'd love to have you there as well. Our guest is Becky Peterson. She's head of residential life at Fort Hayes State University. She has another passion. That passion involves being outdoors. And during our break, we were talking a little bit about how does the outdoors tie in with residential life? Um, so for me, the outdoors ties in with residential life. The purpose of becoming an outdoors woman is to help expose women to the outdoors, expose them to new things. And that is what the college experience is about. It's about learning new things and meeting new people. Um, and really helping others feel confident in what they're doing and that the choices that they make. So I think it's a natural partnership and a natural learning process. You know, you always see, you hear the term outdoorsman. Yeah. When I was reading about Becky, it said outdoors woman. Yeah. And I thought, what does that, what does that entail? This has to be interesting. So being an outdoors woman, yeah. what does that, what does that mean? So being an outdoors woman, um, for me and for the program, is essentially exposing women to the natural resources, to the outdoors. So it's more than just hunting and fishing. And it's definitely more than just hunting and fishing. Um, it's, you know, survival classes, it's backpacking, it's camping skills. It's really helping women um, become exposed to areas that they may not have ever had experience with and helping them learn, typically from other women and men who um, are excited about sharing their passions. I think women we see, sometimes they can have a really negative experience learning from someone else and are completely um, shy away from the experience, but giving them an opportunity in a safe environment to learn um, really, I mean, it speaks volumes and carries with them for life. How did you get started in, in being an outdoors woman? <laughs> so, I got started. Was your, your parents that <laughs> said, no. go camping, go camp? No, so I was an active Girl Scout um, for a long time, loved it, but I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so there is outdoor space, but not mm -hmm. um, like that. It wasn't until I came back to my first professional job at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point where an all campus email came through about a program called Becoming an Outdoors Woman, and I was like, well, I'd like to be outside. <laughs> um, and the program took place in February. And so it was the snow shoeing, the cross country skiing. Um, they had a snowmobiling course that really, um, we did the rifle marks woman and all of those sorts of things as well. But I signed up, and then from that point forward, I was hooked. Um, and now I've been an instructor for them for several years. Now when, when a student comes to you, uh, a female student says, I want to do this, do you put them together as groups? Do you have special, like we're going to go camping this weekend, we're going to do something else? How does that So work? the program is actually um, based out of the Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks and Tourism. Mm -hmm. So the program has two main workshops, um, one in the fall and one in the spring, out at Rock Springs. Um, in Junction City, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So essentially anyone who's interested can apply um, and they get selected. I think um, BOW typically has scholarships for women as well who can't necessarily afford it. Um, and you select which classes you want to sign up for if you're really interested in canoeing or if you're interested in turkey hunting or how to clean game. Um, you sign up for the courses that you're most interested in and then they pair you up with that. And it is women aged um, from 18 all the way into um, later adulthood. Now, when they sign up for this, is this part of the university program or is this an entirely separate different program through Kansas Wildlife and Parks? This is an entirely separate program through Kansas Wildlife and Parks. Now, is there a fee then? And you said there's some scholarships to go with that. Do, can you get credit <coughs> hours for participating that way or not? I don't know if you can get credit hours in participating or not. Um, there is a fee associated with it. Um, and I believe Kansas um, does have a scholarship program. I was able, lucky enough, to go my first year because of a scholarship that was provided to me. Um, and so I just am really passionate about the program and invest and want other women to experience the outdoors. 
The Sounds like way. fun. Where do they go to find out more about this? If you somebody's there and maybe listening to this has somebody at school or somebody yep. watching in um, four days date now. Interested, you can go on the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism and get more information there. Jamie McCabe um, is the Kansas coordinator. And then Bo is an international organization. And so there are trips all over. If you want to experience what becoming an outdoors woman in Utah looks like, you can sign up and go to their weekend there. And then they also do international trips. Um, they do one to Baja, Mexico in March, and so you camp right along the sea um, and do some pretty intense fishing and really good opportunities. And you don't have to know a thing. So if you're a complete novice, that's fine. Um, come and people will teach you. But uh, Bo, you mentioned Bo, that's the acronym for Becoming an Outdoors Woman. Yes. And when you do that, um, are there only women on this trip? I mean, that's kind of, sometimes people wonder about the safety side of that and what you're doing and the fact that it's only, is it for women only? It is primarily for women, um, but we do not discriminate and there have been men who have participated in the program as well. So it's for novice, it's for novice mm -hmm. to some extent there it as is. well. Well, Becky, you do a great job, not only at the university, I love your passion for the outdoors mm -hmm. and uh, good to have you on staff here. We'll look forward to that new, uh, what, they still call them dorms? We call them residence halls Residence now. hall going up. And how many <laughs> students will be in that um, residence hall? 405. Wow, that's going to be cool. Good luck with yeah, all of that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Becky Peterson has been our guest here on the Eco Community Forum. Again, she's head of residential life at Fort Hayes State University and part of the Becoming an Outdoors Woman. If you'd like to find out more, you can send me a note and we'll hook you up or check them out online on Facebook or go on to the Fort Hayes State University as well. Again, Gary Shorman, The Forum, brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communication, our community connected. Youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines, Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com.